Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Ada Ozo. I'm a lifestyle and diabetes coach. I have been a doctor for 25 years. I help people to bring down their blood sugar, bring down their blood pressure, lose weight and get off their drugs. I hope you're looking forward to the class today. Last time I mentioned insulin, okay? And I said I'd talk a bit more about that today. So basically insulin is what is known as a hormone, okay? A hormone is just a chemical. It's a chemical that takes a message from one part of the body to the other. Now insulin is a chemical messenger, basically, and it's produced in the pancreas, which is an organ that is uh, very close to the stomach. An organ is basically a collection of cells, okay? Cells that come together to perform a certain function. Uh, if you think of um, a wall, okay, that has blocks that are glued together with cement, right? So if you take one of those blocks, you can look at that as a cell that is within the whole. Insulin carries messages from one part of the body to the other to others, just all around the body, basically. And um, it carries a lot of different messages, but just two of the messages that are mentioned it carries is that it tells the body to store fat, right? That's one. Another message it carries is that it goes to the cells and tells them to open up and take sugar out of the blood. So what happens when you eat two slices of bread? You eat two slices of bread, it goes into your stomach, into your intestines, and it's broken down into glucose. This, um, this stuff that we call uh, blood sugar is actually blood glucose, but I'm going to continue calling it blood sugar just, you know, so that I don't confuse you. So basically, the food that you eat is broken down, and then the sugar is absorbed into the blood. It goes into the blood. And as it goes into the blood, then the amount of sugar in the blood goes up. Now, when the pancreas, right, remember which produces insulin, when the pancreas notices that the sugar in the blood is high, it produces insulin, which now is released into the blood and goes out into the, um, into the whole body and goes and talks to the cells, okay? Insulin just goes, taps gently on the cell, whispers to it and says, look, this blood sugar is on the high side, okay? Could you just open up and take some? So the, the cell just opens up the doors and lets the sugar in. The blood sugar comes down. So insulin whispers gently, quietly, peacefully, and the cell responds and does what it's supposed to do. Now, this is the way it works in a normal body, in a healthy body, right? Now, at a point, things change. The blood sugar goes up, the insulin goes to the cell and whispers and says, blood sugar is high, please open up and take some. And the cell is like, look, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I'm not taking any sugar. Just basically get lost, go away. And this is very different from the situation that we had before. So now the pancreas is like, I sent out insulin the blood sugar is supposed to come down, but it hasn't. So what does a pancreas do? It says, okay, I sent one insulin and it couldn't get the job done. So now I'm going to, now I'm going to send two, right? So it sends reinforcements and these two insulin are now enough to make the cell open up and take the sugar out of the blood. At the point at which the insulin goes to the cell and whispers and tells it to take the sugar out of the blood and the cell does not respond, that cell is said to have become resistant, resistant to the effect of insulin. That means that insulin resistance has developed. Now I'm talking about one cell, but remember that your body is made up of millions of cells. So this isn't just happening in one cell, this is happening all over the body. If it was just one cell, it wouldn't make any difference, it wouldn't be a big deal. But when it's happening all over the body, then it becomes a big deal. The cell was forced to take the sugar out of the blood, right? And just like human beings, we don't like to be forced to do something that we don't want to do. And really that cell did not want that sugar at all, but it was forced to do it. So gradually it becomes a bit more stubborn. So next time the pancreas sends two, 
insulin is not enough to get the job done. So now it sends three and the cell becomes more stubborn and then it sends four and five, just like that. So at a point you find that you need five times the amount of insulin to get the same job done. Now all this time, the blood sugar is within normal limits because it's enough, the insulin that's produced is enough to bully the cells into opening up and taking the sugar out of the blood. So as the amount of insulin con continues to increase and increase and increase, at a point, the cells are just swimming in a huge ocean of insulin. Insulin is bombarding them, shouting and screaming at them all the time. As a human being, if someone is shouting and screaming at you all the time, what do you do? You go slightly deaf. You start to cover your ears and basically that's what the cells do. The cells start to cover their ears so that they don't hear insulin screaming and shouting at them all the time. And this makes the whole situation even worse. So basically what you have is the pancreas and the cells are at war. The pancreas is trying to force the cells to do what it wants them to do, to bring down this blood sugar and the cells are resisting all that effort. But unfortunately, at a point, the pancreas loses this battle. Okay, it can't win because it's producing so much insulin at such high levels that eventually it just, it just can't keep up. It can't produce enough insulin to overcome that resistance. And that is when you'll find that the blood sugar has gone above normal levels. So this war between the pancreas and the cells can go on for years and years and years, but you won't really notice, you won't know what's going on because the blood sugar seems okay. So that is the way that works. Now, the, so you can see from this that the insulin resistance came first. The blood sugar didn't just rise out of nowhere. And um, because the resistance was so high at a point the pancreas couldn't cope and then the blood sugar started going up. So in diabetes, to treat blood sugar without treating the insulin resistance doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. You have to treat both of them. Yes, definitely, I keep saying it, the high blood sugar is very dangerous, it's very toxic to the body. The body does not like that high blood sugar it does all sorts of things, all sorts of things go wrong in the body because of those high sugar levels. But the insulin resistance was what precipitated that rise in blood sugar. So if you want to treat diabetes effectively, you have to treat the insulin resistance as well. So I asked you a question earlier. I asked you to tell me what you think. Why do drug companies exist? They exist to make money, simple and short. They are businesses. They are there to make money. Now imagine if you buy shares in a cement company and one day the company wakes up, the people running the company, they wake up and say, we think that everyone should have a house of their own, no matter how poor they are. So we're going to give away this cement. So they start manufacturing cement and giving it away, free of charge. What's going to happen to that company? First and foremost, it's not going to make money. And then second, it's going to collapse, right? And you, that you invested money in that company, what were you expecting? You were expecting that the company will do business, make money and give you some of that money as your return on investment, okay? If that doesn't happen, how do you feel? Upset, annoyed, right? It is no different with the drug companies. It's no different. The drug companies don't owe you anything. They don't owe you any loyalty. They do not owe you a thing. Their loyalty, their responsibility is to their shareholders. I'm not saying they're totally heartless, but just call a spade a spade. They're businesses and they are there to make money. And drug companies need you to be sick. If you're not sick, you don't need drugs. They don't make money. They need you to be sick, very sick, but still alive. Why? Because the sicker you are, the more drugs you'll need. The sicker you are, the more expensive the drugs that you're going to need. So that's the way they operate. So don't ever think that 
they're there for you because they're not. So let's consider some of the problems that come with taking drugs. Drugs come with a whole host of side effects and some of them are quite serious. Some like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, those ones are quite common. But some of these drugs can actually cause heart failure. Some of them can make your bones break more easily. Some cause diminished sex drive, erectile dysfunction, urinary tract infections, and the list goes on and on. Another issue is the cost. Now, um, initially, most people are going to be taking, the, we usually start people on metformin. Metformin is relatively cheap. So remember that this is a progressive disease, right? Which means that your blood sugar is going to continue to go higher and higher as the months and years go by. Remember also that it's a chronic disease, so it's not going away. It's going to be there for years and years and years. That metformin at a point will not be enough. After the dosage is increased, then more drugs will be introduced and you'll be taking more and more drugs and the drugs will be getting more and more expensive. Now, when you have diabetes, there are usually two other conditions that go with diabetes. That's high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels. And of course, you're going to need to take drugs for these as well. So you're taking drugs to lower your blood sugar, lower your blood pressure, and lower your cholesterol. Now, some people are also taking supplements to help them bring down their blood sugar. Some of these supplements, like 10, 15, 20, 40,000 naira for a month's supply. I haven't even talked about the money that you're spending on lab tests, on visits to the hospital, on testing strips. So you can see that this is adding up. This is an expensive disease to be suffering from. Because before you know it, you're spending 20, 30, 40, 50,000 naira a month to manage your diabetes and everything else that's associated with it. This is just the price that you're paying, the cost in terms of money that you can see, that you can hold. But diabetes is expensive in other ways. Being told that you have a disease that cannot be cured, that you're going to suffer from for the rest of your life, that is going to get worse and worse as the years go by, it's not easy to deal with that in your head. That is stressful. And when you add the stress of trying to manage the disease, of trying to bring down your blood sugar, of trying to stay healthy, then there's the stress of wondering like, how are you going to manage your family? How are you going to take care of your family? If you fall sick, what's going to happen to your family? How are they going to cope? And then the fact that your quality of life goes down because some people are fighting, as they're, as they're fighting the diabetes, they're fighting with all the side effects of the drugs that they're taking. Quality of life goes down because you can't do all the things that you used to do. Quality of life goes down because it affects your relationships. Your partner, your wife, your husband may not understand what you're going through. You know, it can cause stress between you. And of course, that stress spills over into the rest of the family. These are things that you can't put a monetary value on. But they are as real as the money that's draining out from your bank account every month. And most of the time we're so busy, you know, living life, trying to keep everything together, um, live up to our responsibilities, work and all that, that we don't actually sit down and calculate the cost, what this disease is costing. So the assignment for today, there are two parts. First of all, write down how much it's costing you to buy your diabetes drugs, drugs for high blood pressure, for, um, to bring down your cholesterol, how much you're paying for supplements, lab tests, hospital visits, testing strips, all those, all the things that are related to managing your diabetes. Itemize them and just add it up. How much is it costing you each month? Then the second part of the assignment is what effect is this disease having on your everyday life? How is it affecting your family life? How is it affecting your business, your work life, your social interactions? All those things. 
all those things that we can't put a price to, that we can't cost, how is it affecting those areas of your life? I'll be here next time to give you some tips about how you can manage your blood sugar and your insulin resistance. And it's not the usual stuff, it's not the usual recommendations. So you'll want to stick around for that, okay? So don't miss that. I'll see you next time.